and welcome to the Board Game Chuck YouTube channel. My name is Pierre. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the Dice Stone expansion for the Pyromancer and the Shadow Thief. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the discovery. So here we are. We have the Pyromancer versus Shadow Thief confrontation for Dice Stone. So this was originally part of the Season 1 rerolled, but apparently this is what the new boxes are going to look like. They're just going to take away the battle here. This is supposed to be Battle Box 3 is what it was before. And it said reroll here, and now they've taken that off completely. As an example here, this is going to be my next unboxing. See how it says battle and then rerolled? But uh, hey, stay tuned for this one. It'll be posted at some point. So here we go. Uh, let's take a look at the back here. We have the Shadow Thief, who's a complexity of 5. And as I understand it, he uh, his whole gimmick is that he works a lot with CP. We have a three difficulty pyromancer here, so let's break into this box and see what's up. So let's just move that over. There we go. Okay, so we'll put this to the side because it's very glary. And we'll take a look at the uh, pyromancer here. So here she is in all of her glory. Take a look at her skills here. She's got a fireball, and she has a burning soul, pyroblast, combustion, and then she has a hot streak, meteorite, ignite, oh, and a five defensive roll here. So she'll be, uh, she can't really negate damage yet, but uh, yeah. I say yet because I don't know what the upgrade cards look like. So here we go, and her ultimate's called Scorch the Earth. Because, of course, it would be. She just wants to watch the world burn. Just like that guy in uh, Backdraft. So put that there for now so I can put it back together. And uh, so here we have what her tokens look like. Got the knockdown. Got that burn. Fire mastery. Stun. It looks like she has ooh, a four faces on the die. I'm surprised she's only a three difficulty then. And here we have her backstory. Her bio, the bio, so here, and the rules clarifications. So the Pyromancer has only one way to deal with her enemies. Swift, hot destruction. Even her defense is offensive. She is a glass cannon who deals massive amounts of damage, turning her foes to ash. I mean, I personally would not mind being turned into Ash Williams from the Evil Dead series, but, you know, that's not a big deal. So next we got her combat point dial goes from 0 to 15. I'll just set it to 2 so that I will be ready for the next fight here because that's how many you start with, 2. Next we have her health dial. goes all the way up to 99, but you do, of course, start with 50, 5, 0 health points. That's what the health dial looks like there. Beautifully illustrated as usual. Uh, next, I'll just go into the dice here. So we did take a look at the die faces on that other board, so if you want to rewind and take a look at those, but they're nice and orange, because of course they would be for her here, or this character. Next, we have her cards, which I will open up off screen and show you in just a moment. So here we go. As always, everyone comes with a card timing, status effect, and turn order card. So this is the player reference card here. Put that right there. And then now we start with uh, unique cards to the Pyromancer here. Now we go into her upgrades. So we take a look here. This is Molten Armor 3. And it seems as though, yeah, she still does not get any uh, damage mitigation. So she, like the bio said she is a glass cannon. Now we have more upgrades here for the Pyromancer. And now we go into the common cards that are built into every character. Which I will just go through fast because if you've looked at any of the other unboxings or played this game, you know these cards well. There you go. Now if you'll allow me to just put this back in real quick. Maybe I'll do this off screen. I'll be right back. Okay, perfect. So I've done that. I'll put this like this. Next here we have the tokens for everybody. So if I remember correctly, she had this one, this one, that one, and that one. 
So these would be for the the Shadow Thief, which I'm actually very excited to play because he, uh, the Shadow Thief has such a unique play style. Here we have some ads for the miniatures that you can use to play with Dice Throne Adventures. And here we have the uh, rules of play. So I know that this is Season 2 imagery, but um, it's the same across the board on how to play this game. So There you go. It does also have rules for the... I point these out in every video. A four-player game and a three-player game, which I think... Uh, if you want to play with other people, the four-player game is the way to go. Three is very lacking, the King of the Hill mode. But I do think that this game is played the best at two. So just a heads-up kind of game. So I'll take this away. And now let's go into the Shadow Thief. I guess I'm very excited for for this here. I forgot to do the other uh, back of the board for the other one. But this is what this one looks like. Let's go into his abilities here. We have a Dagger Strike. Uh, shifty strike, pickpocket, so he's stealing some CP there, an insidious strike, so you just gain CP and you de deal CP damage. That seems very strange. Next we have the Shadow Dance, Shadow Defensive, Ooh, and a Counter Strike, so you'll be able to pick one of these and do it, and then a Cardiocopia, so you just draw cards. And his ultimate is called the Shadow Shank. So entering the shadows is my safe place. Safe place to shank you. Shank you very much. Put this down here. Now we will take a look at his token sheet here. We got Shadow, Sneak Strike, Poison. And he has one, two, three, four die faces as well. Again, he's a difficulty five. So that is uh, as indicated here. Got rules, clarifications, his bio, weapon of choice, poison dagger. If we got the bio here, the shadow thief doesn't like to end things quickly. He prefers running the long con, increasing his health, poisoning his foes, hiding and striking from the shadows. That's his style. If allowed to reach the conclusion of this complicated game plan, his victim will find themselves in utter ruin. So that's fantastic there. Next we will take a look at his combat point dial, which goes up to 15. From 0 to 15, and we'll put it on 2, because that's how many you start with. And next we got the health point dial. Very nice art on there. And you do start with 50 health points, so we'll put it like that. Next we have the die faces. Very nice purple dice. It's very kind of Joker-esque colors, I find. Especially the green and purple together. Very nice, though. Sorry for the noise. Next we have the cards. So you know the drill. I'll be right back. So as stated previously, the first card is the turn order card. Right? Just the player aid there. Put it right there. And next we go into the unique cards to the Shadow Thief. He's got six. That's pretty cool. Next, we have the um, upgrades to his defensive abilities here. And now his upgrades to his other abilities. And now the cards unique. I mean, sorry, the cards that come with every character. Go fast. We've actually seen them in this video. Let's just pull a Sonic and just go fast here. There you go. So now that is it. Semi end of box, but ultimate end of video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, maybe leave a like, uh, subscribe, bells, whistles, whatever the heck's going on. Uh, leave a comment below. If you do, I'll be sure to answer it as soon as I can. And until next time, have a good one.